Okay, so we've seen some of the um, facilities that um, using a data set can offer us. What I'm going to do now in the probably next couple of videos or so is to concentrate a little bit more on actually managing um, the uh, pools and the VDEVs and uh, managing the actual sizes. Um, one of the issues, and you'll still read articles on the internet about this, that you can't increase or reduce a, 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 a Z pool. This is incorrect these days. It used to be the case that it was quite difficult to um, reduce a Z pool. You can increase them fairly easily, but to reduce a Z pool did used to be quite hard, but it's, it's a lot easier now. Um, they've made improvements. Um, that you can adjust um, the config, not in the size, but the configuration of a pool. It's still not perfect. Um, you, there's, you can't increase or decrease with every theoretical possibility, but it's certainly a lot flexible than it used to be. So, as I said, it's, it's easier to increase a pool than it is to shrink one. So, and especially with RAID-based um, VDEVs, you. you when you're dealing with RAID, you really need to think long and hard about how you want the RAID configured because effectively, once a RAID is set up, you can't really adjust it. With mirror um, VDEVs, you've got a lot more flexibility. Um, and I'm going to demonstrate what you can do with each type of VDEV. Um, there's two commands that I'm going to be using. Um, first is zpool add, and the add command is used to create or add a new vdev. So it's important to remember your add is to add or create, sorry, yeah, add or remove or create a new vdev. The other one is zpool attach, and the attach command is used to attach or detach VDEVs to a pool. So that's slightly different, subtle difference. One's used to create VDEVs, and the other one's used to modify a VDEV. So add is used to create or destroy the VDEVs, or modify them in some way. Um, and add and detach is used to um, either augment it or reduce it in some way. So I'm going to start off with a striped pool, which is the official term for what I call a JBOD. So I should really use the official terminology. Um, and we've seen that already, where it's just a simple case of said pool, create, name the pool, and then specify the um, devices that you want to be part of the um, part of the pool and therefore part of the VDEV. Um, so yeah this is a stripe pool all we're doing here is taking the space on each device that we add to the VDEV and it's all augmented into one big chunk which is what the um, space is available in the pool to be used for data sets. So I'll just wait for this to create. I've, I'm using every every disk I've got in here available. So that's why it's taking a little bit long because of the um, disk that's failing. So I'm going to now create a data set on top of that. Again, I've forgotten the create command. And I'm going to change the ownership to my user. Uh, test so it's the pool and the data set name and of course I've got to put the form slash in this gets quite confusing whereas when you're dealing with ZFS and ZPool commands you obviously don't use the leading slash because there's no concept of that it's just the pool name with the slash separating that from the data set name <coughs> And obviously when you're referring to the data set and you've used the default parameters, the default mount point, 
then you have to obviously put the forward slash in to refer to it as an absolute path. So that's where it can get a little bit confusing. So I'm just going to go back into here and I'm just going to copy some data from the user. I'm not going to copy everything. Copy that into this directory just to create some data. <coughs> So hopefully this shouldn't take too long. And what I'm going to do while this is copying is to um, show how we can remove a device from this striped um, stripe pull. Okay, that's done. I'm just going to get this to um, copy a few more copies just to create some more um, some more data on the drive. We've only used up half a gigabyte at the moment, so it's just to fill up the drive a little bit more. So let's do... So all I'm doing here, I'm creating a loop with uh, the numbers 1 to 20. I'm copying user share and just copying it into a directory called share with this number. So the first directory called share1 and so on. So I'll just leave that running in the background and I'll do this demonstration while that's copying and just filling up. So let's look at the layout of the pool and the VDEV. So if you remember again, just to reiterate that um, this uh, pool has got one single, um, it's got four VDEVs, sorry, each individual VDEVs. So let's do Z pool remove is the command to remove a device specify the pool and I want to remove um, let's remove SDE now you didn't used to be able to do this um, because SDE is a VDEV um, you didn't used to be able to uh, remove this if SDE went faulty as we've seen your, your luck's your luck's out unless you've got the backup but because we're managing this removal um, ZFS is able to um, transfer the data that's sitting on SDE. As you can see, it's it's moving it. It's, it says here evacuation of SDE one in progress because um, it's being managed. The the removal it, ZFS is um, allowing us to actually remove a top level VDEV, so it's it's perfectly okay. And so I didn't didn't be able to use to do this. So in a while this will complete. Looks like it's nearly complete. It always takes a long time when it's virtually done. And you can see we've actually removed that disk from the, or the VDEV if you like, from the pool. Um, I should have shown the disk space because that would have obviously been reduced. Um, you can see there we've only got four uh, terabytes. So that's roughly one and a half times three. Um, it would have been five terabytes with with that SDE um, because it's about a, a terabyte in size. Um, in fact, what I can do now is to um, uh, 
Right, oh, yeah, before I go on, I should just mention, you'll notice this line here. So it's told us that remove has been successful, it's completed. And you'll notice this line here, memory, 552 memory used for remove device mappings. What's happened here is that although you can't see it, we will see it later on. The, what ZFS has done is it's created a new um, like reference to these three VDEVs. Um, but it's linked to the previous reference where there were four VDEVs and that's what this is about. It's using this memory um, to keep a link where that data was on the old disk. So we can add um, uh, the new device back in with the zpool add command. So it's as simple as zpool add, name of the pool, and I'll just add back in SDE. Now SDE is going to be empty relative to the other three disks because they're still, if I switch back here, they're still having data written to them. But as soon as SDE becomes active, which is now, it will, it will be having data written to it. So you can see it's online, and if I do a DF minus H, which I forgot to do originally, you can see the size has now jumped up to just under five terabyte, which is what you'd expect by adding another terabyte. And if I remove it again, which is perfectly legal to do, and bearing in mind these are a little bit slow because I'm still copying this data in the background I just wanted to prove that all this can be done online while you've got your systems running um, there's the status you can see it's still copying or it's just just about finished actually yes yeah, obviously just finishing up there you go it always pauses when it's actually about to complete the complete the transaction it's running on. So now you can see what it's done. It's created another reference because we've removed SDE a second time and that's why the memory's gone up. So it may not be so efficient to be doing this continually. It might be more efficient if you wish, wish to reconfigure a pool to create a new pool with a, another set of disks if you have them spare and to transfer the data over from one pool to another pool. But you can see, if you haven't got that facility, it is, it is possible to resize the, the um, striped uh, pool, even though in theory you shouldn't be able to, because if, as I say, if it was a data error on one of the disks, you would lose the data because it's unmanaged. It's unexpected and unmanaged. And of course, you know, we could keep on removing these till we're down to one disk. Assuming there wasn't too much data, it will stop you once it um, uh, gets to a point where it knows it can't transfer the data onto that one disk. So, for example, if I added um, one of our files, so let's put disk one in there. So we've now got a striped pool with um, three disk VDEVs and one file DVEV, VDEV. If I now remove the disk, so we only end up with this one um, gigabyte uh, disk, you'll see it will tell us that we can't remove the last disk because by now I would hope, yes, we've allocated 12 gigabytes, so it won't fit on this last file because it's only one gigabyte in size. So what I'll do is, is I'll remove um, the drives and see how far I can get. Remove test SDB. And I'll remove SDD to save waiting for SDC. Okay, we can't do parallel removals, it's telling us. We have to wait for the first removal to complete. 
and that kind of makes sense if you think about it because it would have to calculate ahead um, whether it's got space to actually do all these removals. Um, what I might do is, oh it has finished, okay. Let's see how much space that was, oh, it was 12 gigabytes. So you can see SDB has gone there, let's remove SDD now. And it looks like it's got, it had 3.7 gig to move before, it's now got f nearly 5 gigabytes to move across onto SDC. So we'll just wait for that to move, it's done about a fifth of it. So it's getting there, just waiting for it to complete. Okay, looks like it's just about done then. Yep, it's done. We're down to the last disk and the single file. So now if I try and remove this last disk, it should tell us that it can't do it because there's not enough space on the remaining block device, the remaining VDEV, which is disk one. Yep, and it says it can't remove it because it's run out of space. But of course we could remove the file because that's tiny and there's plenty of space on the SDC disk. Uh, disk one. So yeah, it's it's doing that as you'd expect. So it looks like it had filled that disk up completely because it's got one gigabyte of data to move back onto the disk, and it's done. And you notice how this memory that's used has increased every time we've done a change. It's up to 19,000 um, bytes now, or, or memory. I don't know if that's byte, just 19,000. Um, whereas we started on the initial removal with 500 or so, 552 I think it was. So I, I'm not sure where that is, if it's actual memory or if it's on disk memory. Um, but you can see that every change we do is, is a minimal amount, but it's taking up some memory somewhere. So that's how we can um, modify the um, configuration of a striped pool. So VDEVs can be changed from single devices um, to mirrors. So we know this SDC is a faulty disk. I don't trust it. It might die in the next, you know, next half an hour or so for all I know. So what we can do, instead of adding a disk as a striped um, disk configuration, we can add a disk to make SDC part of a mirror VDEV um, so that it's protected in case it does go down. We've got a backup drive to maintain functionality within the pool. And again, you can um, add and replace devices as long as there's um, the devices have enough space on them. So for example, SDC is a um, 1.5 terabyte drive. If I try to add in my 1 terabyte drive, uh, chances are it would fail because it's not big enough. So what we do to change this into a, a mirrored VDEV is we do Z pull attach, remember attach was used to modify um, an existing layout um, whereas the add and remove are for adding um, new VDEVs, attach and uh, detach are to modify a VDEV. So we're going to modify an existing D VDEV which is currently SDC and we're going to add another device to it 
so that there will be two devices in the, S, uh, in the VDEF and what I'm going to do is attach um, to the test pool I've got to specify the existing device uh, existing VDEV and I'm going to tell it what other device I want to attach so I'm going to try the small one first of all and you can see it says I can't do that because it's just too small you can't mirror unequal devices so that's good that it's told us that so I'm going to go for SDD And as soon as that comes back, and you'll see why I've created some data on there, is to give me a chance to run the status while it's it's doing stuff in the background. So if I do Z pull status, you can see we've got lots of information here that's appeared. It says one or more devices currently being resilvered. The pull continue function as you hope, possibly in a degraded state. Well, it was degraded initially because it was only one device anyway, and then it's got a status on the resilvering and how fast it's going how much it's done um, and then it's still got information about the removal that's occurred previously so we'll just wait for this resilver to complete um, you can see it's running at approximately 100 megabits per second so it's uh, reasonably fast as I say given the age of the technology um, but you can see in the layout of the uh, Paul, what it's done, it's created a mirror, it's demoted the previous D V dev, which was SDC, it's demoted it now to just a device, a block device, it's added in the new block device that we specified, and it's put them under a new V dev called mirror. And you can see this dash one pre previously we've only seen dash zero, and this is related to how this um uh, links in with the modifications we make when we're adjusting VDEV. So over these next few examples you'll see this number going up. Um, they never get reused and I think this is why this memory stuff is kept behind as that's a link to the previous dash zero which we didn't see because it's hidden behind these block VDEVs, these device VDEVs here. So we'll just wait for that to complete now. It's done. All oh, right, it's taken quite a while actually. Okay, it's only done 10%. So let's see if I can show you anything else. Right, what I might do is remove some of the data here because we made it too big. Okay, so that's finished now. So if I just call up, oh, looks like I've got some data errors on one of the disks. That's quite interesting. I'm not sure quite why that is, unless it's because I've used STD in the test pool before and assumes it's part of the same group, I'm not sure. Um, it could be the disk going faulty because the ones I'm having problem with, problems with are all the same type, so it could be genuine errors um, that have occurred on the disk, but as you can see the um, ZFS is scrub the disk and um, corrected the errors. So what I'm going to do just to make sure it's still in the valid state is to scrub the pool again. And wait for that to finish.
So while that goes on, you can see that um, if I do S minus L test and have a look at our directory, you can see the files. I deleted some directories there to make the size of the um, data a little bit smaller. You can see they're removed, but apart from that, the um, data is still there. So what we've done, we've um, added another device to the pool as a mirror device we've created a backup and in doing so we've also had this detection that on the new device that we've added funnily enough um, that there are errors occurring so there's a double whammy there with the protections kicked in immediately basically even though it wasn't on the disk that I thought there might be problems with. Um, what we can do now, uh, for example, is to do something like add another um, VDEV. So I suppose we want to expand um, this pool. It's currently got um, five, no, not five gigabytes. Let's look at DFMS H. It's currently got 1.4 um, terabytes um, available. Um, as you can see, there's the size of it there. That's remember that's the total size that ZF can use to not only for the user data but for managing the. Um, data sets within the pool. So we can increase this by adding to the um, pool by adding another VDEV and I could add another mirror which is what I'm going to do. So do Z pool add because we're adding a new VDEV. Remember the add and remove is to um, deals with actual adding and removal of VDEVs so whereas attach and detach deals with in uh, what we can do to individual VDEVs, how we add or detach, uh, sorry, attach or, or detach devices to the VDEV. So we're going to add to the test pool a new mirror and we'll have to use the unused devices so it's um, SDB and SDE. Now this will warn me now because SDE is the smaller of the two drives and not it's not going to be identical so it should oh it hasn't okay what's happened there then it hasn't warned me because it's just automatically used the smaller of the two um, so it's not even warned warned me of that so if I now do Z pull status you can see it's added a new mirror which is number six so all this other work that's gone on has used the intervening um, VDEV numbers and the next available one is um, 6. So currently as it stands, without writing any new data, these two disks have got no new data on them and all the existing data is only on these two disks. But over time, as more stuff gets written to the pool, the data will be spread evenly across the two VDEVs, across all four disks. So what we've got here, we've got the error that was dealt with, so let's do Z pull clear to get rid of that. And do a state to see what's going on now. It still says about the removal that occurred earlier on. And in fact it says there VDEV 5. So that's the last removal we did, which is why the new VDEV we created is VDEV number 6. Which is uh, now a mirrored VDEV. Um, scrubs repaired so I didn't find any more errors and that's it as soon as we had the new VDEV it's operational there's nothing else to be done no data to be resilvered or anything it's a brand new um, additional um, VDEV which gives more data so if I go back to my Kernatex user ls minus l I could do for example um, let's do a copy command again and copy it to share xx and copy more data uh, oh. copy to 
the share xx and while that's running in the background of course we can still do stuff and it just means data is now being written to the second vdev in the pool which is mirror dash six so what I'm going to do now is detach the disk I've had problems with because in the real situation I'd need to detach it to check it and find out why it's failing so to do that because I'm not adding or removing a VDEV I'm adjusting the layout the configuration of a VDEV I need to do Z pull detach rather than remove so I'm detaching one of the devices that makes up the v D VDEV so I need to do Z pull detach test and I'll specify the VDEV that I want to detach so it's SDD and now when I do Z pull status the um, data will be removed and we're left you can see with a single striped VDEV and the mirror 6 VDEV that's done that quite quickly actually Oh, yeah, I know why it's done it quickly. It's because there's a mirror. There's nothing to copy across. It's just an identical copy. So that's why it's removed it straight away. And we can also remove the um, SDC um, VDEV as well. Um, so, for example, this, is, this could be one way of upgrading this to a bigger size. So if I remove that... Uh, sorry, this will have to be removed because we're not adjusting the um, we're not adjusting the VDEV. We're actually removing the VDEV. So I remove that, and we will end up with just the single VDEV mirror dash six with the drives or the physical devices SDB and SDE. So this is copying stuff because this is the last device on the VDEV. It's got to offload the data that's on that VDEV there, SDC. It's got to offload it onto the remaining VDEVs, which is obviously mirror dash six. So it's going to take another four minutes by the looks of it. And once that's evacuated, we'll be back to where we were a little bit earlier on with a single VDEV, which is a mirror consisting of two um, physical devices, two block devices. And we could have another, add another device to that mirror um, and make it into a three-way mirror. So there's uh, extra protection, which means that two devices can fail before we're in, in a position where we're running just on one disk without any redundancy. And if I do Z pull list, um, at the moment it's still got the space of um, the smallest of these drives, which is one gig, plus the space of the other VDEV in the pool. Um, but as soon as SDC has been evacuated and it's removed from the um, Z pool, then that size of the whole Z pool will be reduced to the size of the smallest of this VDEVs because they're different sizes, which is SDE, which is one gigabyte. So this will be just under a gig, uh, sorry, just under a terabyte in size. So I'll just wait for this to complete. It's nearly done. And again, while that's all been going, while, while, while we've been doing that, you can see we've created another copy of share, a shared directory and user, called it ShareXX. And you can see the stuff in there. We can view the data in the files. You can see there's no, no problems at all. It's all all good even though I'm getting errors with um, uh, very flaky disks um, ZFS is doing its stuff and maintaining integrity of the drives especially that I've, with, that I've got um, uh, redundancy built in so that's been um, evicted now the evacuation is complete and we're back down to one mirror 
I'll do Zapple list. You can see the size has been reduced to the size of the smallest drive. And SDB is just reflecting um, the contents of SDE. So what we can do now is to upgrade the size of this mirror to take the full advantage of SDB and to do that we can use another command to replace it um, but first of all when you replace drives if you want to take advantage of uh, bigger disks you need to set a property on that's set off by default against the Z pool so the property if I get it first of all is called auto expand and just apply the pool as usual and you can see it's set to off now I think the reason why I've not seen any, anything written about this but I've had the thought why this is set to default of, of off because I thought well if you're upgrading you'd want that set to on to take advantage of the new space with disks but I think it's a safety device because if for example you had one disk go down you've got to replace it with a disk that's equal or greater than that size now if you replace it with a disk that's bigger and you've got all to expand on you can only replace that drive with a, a drive of uh, that size or greater if you're waiting for a replacement disk to come through that is the true size rather than the bigger disk you just want to replace it with the newer drive that you're waiting on order that's the same size as the original and not the same size as the temporary replacement drive so I can see why you'd want to leave it off there so that you could insert the bigger temporary drive until you got hold of the replacement drive which is the correct size um, and that would allow you to replace the bigger drive because ZFS wouldn't be treating it as a bigger drive it would just be using it as the same size drive even though it's a bigger drive so I can see why that auto expand is set to off by default so we're going to set it on because we want to upgrade this mirror so that we're using the full capacity of SDB I to get the size from um, one terabyte to one and a half terabytes so we set auto expand equals on and let's just read that to check it's worked yes it has and now what we can do is to um, use Z pool replace specify the pool name specify the existing device we want to replace and specify the new device that we want to replace it with so let's use um, SDD and let's do Zpool status to see that it's going and there it is it's replacing SDE with SDD so we'll just wait a couple of minutes for that to finish I'm going to remove some of these files again just to um, make the copying a little bit quicker Act copy, uh, removing them while I'm doing this uh, replacement is actually going to make it take longer but we'll just keep an eye on it so at the moment it's replacing it's copying the data that's on SDE all the blocks and so on onto SDD and then when it's finished it will um, evict SDE from the mirror and we'll end up with just mirror dash six which um, is the VDEB which consists of the disk STB and the disk SDD let's see how this is going, I'm actually going to stop that just to give this um, resilvering a chance
Um, all the while this is going on, I haven't mentioned um, memory usage yet, but ZFS uses a certain amount of memory. I'm not sure what it is these days. It used to be, it's varied over the time I've used ZPool. Um, I think at one point it tended to use about half the available memory. I'm not sure um, exactly how much it uses now, but I, I'm pretty sure it's a tweakable, a tunable thing you can set. Um, it didn't also used to show up in... in um, top either um, but it looks like maybe it is actually showing as, as being in use now um, but uh, the the memory that it uses as a cache it does yield if a program demands memory more memory so it, will, it won't hog the memory just to use it for a cache it will uh, yield and give up memory um, if a program demands more memory and there's no other memory available So let's do simple status again. Okay, it's getting there. Yeah, the time scales are are going quicker than the actual real time, so it shows that the estimate is catching up. I'd slowed it down by trying to do the removal here that would have taken some resources away from um, the actual resilvering yes yeah, got 50 seconds to go now And if we look at ZPool list, we can see it's still set at one terabyte in size. Um, and that won't increase until this resilvering is complete and SDE has been ejected from the um, from the VDEV. So we're almost done, 10, 11 seconds left. Okay, so it's just about done. It says it's completed, and there it is, it's completed. So we've now got SDB and SDD. Um, I'll just switch back and carry that on. Uh, so if I do Z pool list, you can see we've increased the total pool size to the maximum that we can for this mirror, which is just under one and a half terabytes. So it shows how I've upgraded. And I guess from what I said earlier on about the um, auto replace being a protection mechanism, auto expand, sorry, you might want to think about um, setting that back to off after you've um, increased or incremented the size of your VDEV, um, just to be sure in case you do have to replace one of the devices with a slightly bigger device um, as, as a temporary measure. Um, to avoid getting into any problems 